where we are going to learn SOLIDWORKS and the Keychain FOB project. The objectives for our project are to how to use SOLIDWORKS, how to make a sketch in 3D, how to extrude that sketch into 3D, how to make a sketch in 2D, how to extrude that sketch into 3D, how to create your own keychain fob with your name on it. So that's going to be the objective of this movie. And later we're going to print it on a 3D printer in ABS plastic for you to take home. All right, so first of all, to run the SOLIDWORKS program, it might be an icon on your desktop. It might be a program that is pinned down to the bottom of your taskbar. You might also have to go to All Programs and find SOLIDWORKS whatever edition that we're working with and SOLIDWORKS in this case, SOLIDWORKS 2014 X64 edition. That takes a few seconds to get up and going. Then we can start creating a new file. So we go to File, New, and we'll make a new part. An assembly is an assembly of various parts and a drawing is simply a paper drawing of those parts or assemblies. So you always have to start out with a part. On the screen of SOLIDWORKS we come to this, a place where there can be a front plane and we are the drawing area over here, the top plane or the right plane. The origin is the place where X, Y, and Z come together and are zero. So let's start with the front plane. We're going to create a new sketch on that front plane. So we right click on the front plane and we see options down there at the bottom, but up above we'll go to sketch, that is making a new sketch. On this new sketch, we can use lots of 2D tools. It's a 2D sketch that we're creating. So the things that we can create are lines, rectangles, slots, circles, arcs, polygons, splines, ellipses, sketches or fillets, text, points, or even sketch a picture. There are other features and different things across there, but we're going to stay just within the bounds of sketch. So the first thing we'll do to make this keychain fob is a center rectangle. To have it start from the center, the origin, the world origin, we'll go there. Those arrows represent X and Y and represent where the world origin is where X and Y are zero. We'll click on that. We'll come out of ways. It doesn't make a difference how far you go because we're going to dimension that in a bit. So we'll click and now we're ready to dimension that. We'll go up to Smart Dimensions. We'll just click once there. We can dimension it from point to point or simply dimension this long line. We'll click once and just move on up to move the dimension up and away from you a little bit and we'll go ahead and put in three. Notice that we're in units and that it's in decimal units right now, which is fine. We're just going to go with three inches and OK, hit enter or click on the green arrow. Now we'll go ahead and make this one inch and hit enter and that just confined this project to three by one and it's a simple rectangle. Well, we'll take that sketch and we'll now get out of it. Now to get out of the sketch, we don't hit the red X. That gets out of it without doing anything, without leaving anything. It's as if we just want to say, oops. No, we want to get out of the sketch here with that icon to say, yes, we're done with that sketch so far. Notice now we have a list of something. Um, there's something new in our list over here and that's sketch one. I'm going to click away from that sketch and just simply say, okay, now we're going to try to go to features and try to make a boss extrude, or in other words, make this into 3D, extrude it into 3D. It's asking us to select a plane since I was off that sketch. So in this list of the tree, in other words, the organizational tree here, we have to open it up by clicking on the plus and come down to that sketch. So it knows we're talking about that sketch. 
and lo and behold, now we can actually extrude that. We can extrude it in different directions. We'll go to a certain dimension. We'll go to one eighth of an inch. When you hit one eighth and you hit enter, it changes it into decimal 0.125. And we'll say that we're done with that by clicking again on the green arrow. That is now an eighth of an inch thick, three inches this way, one inch that way. Oh, but we forgot something. We would like to round these corners and we would like to put in a circle right here, right about right there. We'd like to put in a hole for our keychain. So that's a problem. There's lots of ways we can do that. One way would be to go back and edit the sketch. By the way, a couple of things about moving. Zooming in means pull the middle mouse button towards you, the scroll mouse button towards you to push it away, push the scroll mouse button away from you, and that's zooming in and out. To rotate the project, just take the middle mouse button and just simply move left and right or up and down. And so that's how you rotate the project. After you get Now, we'd like to go back and we'd like to go edit this sketch. Well, notice Boss Extrude has a plus next to it. To the left of that, there is a little plus there. We will click on that. We'll go down to the sketch and we'd like to edit that sketch. I clicked once and I'll go up there to edit sketch. Now we're actually in the sketch again and we're editing it. We're upside down, so we'll have to move around. And there's a way to say, let's have it go flat straight towards us and that would be right click on the sketch that button there goes a normal two and it turns around exactly the same way as we started now we'd like to make these corners rounded let's say by three sixteenths of an inch rounding radius around these four corners well there's a 2d method to that and that is right here sketch a fillet before we start picking things to make round. Let's look at the parameters, the qualities. Let's make sure it's 3 sixteenths of an inch, 3 slash 1 six. Hit enter, becomes 0.1875. And now let's pick things to fill it. So we're looking there, that has the input focus, the blue area here is always what's being asked of you to click on or to enter in. And we'll just simply either pick two lines or simply a vertex, a point. And now that's entered in. We'll go one, two, three, four. We have four vertices entered into that. And we'll go ahead and say that we're done. The green OK or the green OK button over there. We've rounded it. It's done. Now just to prove that it is actually done, even though it doesn't look like it's done, that's the sketch as of now. But we haven't told it to say that we're finish with the sketch. So we'll get out of the fillet again and we'll get out of the sketch. That button, remember, not this one. Now it fixes the sketch to reflect what we had just done. But oops, we forgot the hole, the circle that we'd like to put in to make a hole in this corner. So we'll go back to the sketch and that's either a right click or just a single click and say we wish to edit the sketch again. We'll make it normal to us and we'll put a circle right here at the center of this radius. So we'll go to the circle tool, just the plain circle tool. We'll start the middle right there where the center of the radius is. And we'll just pick a point and we'll smart dimension that and we'll make it about 3 sixteenths of an inch. This might be too big. We'll find out once we print one. We might adapt this. But we'll go in 3 sixteenths. Notice that that's a diameter, not the radius. So it's half as big as the arc was, because that's the diameter of this arc. 3 sixteenths was the radius of this arc. That's the diameter of the circle, I should say. So we're done with that. We're going to get out of the dimension. And we're going to get out of the sketch. And lo and behold, our project now has a hole in it because that was part of the sketch. Now we'd like to put some um, words on this. Actually, before we do the words, let's go ahead and round these corners, these edges 
are practically knife edges. It'll cut us as it's sitting in our pocket, so we ought to try to make this a little bit more friendly. Let's round this in the 3D world. So at the level of the boss extrude, we'll stay there and let's look at some 3D tools we can do. One of them is to create a 3D fillet. In other words, round the edges. The other options there is a chamfer. In other words, a slice off at an angle. But let's do a fillet. Before we start doing that, let's not do the whole thing. Let's delete that. Let's tell it that the radius that we want to do is going to be half the thickness of this because we can't do more than half this thickness. It was 1 8. So half of 1 8 is 1 16. So we'll put in 1 16 for the fillet parameters. We'll hit enter. And now we'll start picking things to fill it. So notice tangent propagation is on, which means it tries to find things that are tangent to this project. In other words, anything that is tangent would be like a circle, just barely touching that in other lines. So if I click once on that, we get the entire front edge. If I twist it around, we'll go to the back side. It's kind of hard sometimes to see, but now we're on the back side and we'll add this other edge and it found it. So we have two edges and it's not done yet until we click on the green OK. And there we have it. Now we're ready to put in some text. Create a new sketch on this blue surface. So on that surface is <laughs> on that surface is where we're going to start creating a new sketch. We'll go ahead and go normal two so we can see it flat against us. By the way, if you do normal two again, it switches around so just do it enough times to where it makes sense for you and now we're ready to start making our text the text is a 2d tool when we're in sketch and the text tool is right there we can um, just simply start typing the words we can have the words be long like this I'll just go ahead and enter there By the way, if curves was up there, be sure to get rid of anything. We're not following a curve. We're just simply trying to have this text be sitting on the surface. Now, if you want the text to be long like this, that's fine. The other way to do it would be to put an enter between your first name and your last name. To get it centered, these tools right now don't work for centering a line. So you might have to put in a couple of spaces there in front of different things to make them look centered. Now that looks all right, but it's not very exciting. It's not very thick. It's going to be a little bit tough to read. We ought to make it thicker than this, bigger, higher. So we're going to not use the document generic font and we'll get out of that and we'll go into font where we can get different types of font. Without going into all the different fonts, let me just tell you to stay away from things like chiller or script type fonts. The reason why is if we were to use one of these fancy fonts, it does not create a watertight area that can actually be used by the 3D printer. Plus the little parts of these points will be so small, our current 3D printer will ignore some of those things. So that's not going to work. We're going to have to use a font that is nice and big and bold and thick. I'll just simply go to Adobe Gothic Standard and we'll make the units rather than just point 0.1 inch there. We'll go to a total of one fourth of an inch. You can use units that are the units of this file that are in inches. You can use points like 20 points, 14 points, just like you do in Microsoft Word, so to speak, and we'll just say okay to that. Now, moving this around, they haven't made a very good way of moving this that's easy to get to, so we'll just simply click and just keep on clicking until things look like they're about centered the way you want them on that project. 
All right, that looks good. It's a simple font and we're ready to get out of the text. Now we're ready to not make a extrusion, but a cut out of this word, your name. And so we're gonna go in there, we're gonna stay on that sketch, and we're going to make a, well, first we have to get out of the sketch, and we're gonna use this sketch, don't double click on it like I had done, and we're now going to look at our 3D tools that we can do, and one of them is an extruded cut. An extruded cut makes a cut of the words. Now it doesn't know what we're doing. I thought we were on sketch there, so we'll see if this will work. We can just stay. That's our cut. It's making a new sketch. So we'll be on the sketch to and we'll try to make an extruded cut. At this point, if it says that it doesn't know what you're trying to make a cut out of, you might need to go here in the organizational tree and go down to Sketch 2 and choose that. But we were lucky we already had it on there, so it knows that we're going through this. Now notice that it's going all the way through. If we do that, and I accept that, blind or all the way through, all the way through the whole entire project, or the thickness uh, an eighth of an inch all the way through it. That might look cool. We'll say all bodies and go all the way through. But what's going to happen when we take this out of the printer and scrape it off of the glass or the bottom of the printer? The middle of the O is going to fall off, the middle of the A is going to fall out, and it won't look like a very nice project. Plus, why do we want to read your name backwards on the back of it? So what we'll do instead is we'll go down and we'll edit that cut extrude we'll edit the feature. Now where it had said the distance, why don't we say half of that, that's one eighth of an inch, half of an eighth, just double the bottom number and that's one sixteenth of an inch and that's going to make that go halfway through the project. If we want to put some text on the back side we could also do that, but that means we're probably going to have to make that less than a sixteenth of an inch, otherwise we'll be able to see through parts of the different words. So whatever this decimal is, if you wish to put text on the back, make that number smaller than .0625. But anyways, we'll go ahead and accept that. It looks good. We got the name there. Let's go ahead and say OK. Let's see what that looks like as we twist it around. You can see the depth of the words and it goes through halfway of the project. We're ready to save it. Saving the project is pr something that we should probably do as soon as we start the project. So we should go to File, Save, go to your U drive and give it a name like Keychain fob your name I've done this a few times so I'll call it your name 3 and save and continue on the project Before we go any further, we should probably give this blank file a file name so that we can save it on the fly anytime we need to. So that would be file save. If we wish to change the name of it, we can go save as. But let's go to save. Let's go to your U drive and let's call it something like key chain fob your name. I've done this several times, so I'll call it four and save it. Now as you work on the project every few minutes, you can just simply hit save and the shortcut for that is control S. Later, we'll learn how to export this file Later, we'll learn how to export this file to a STL file for the 3D printer. 
so we can actually print this out in 3D in plastic for you to take home.